want to see your face. I want to see, want to see your face. I want to see, I want to see your face. I want to see, want to see your face. Oh, oh, show me your glory. Yeah, yeah, show me your glory. Show me your glory, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I want to see, I want to see your face. Show me your glory, yeah. Show me your glory, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. dealing with right now the power of the prophetic anointing because saints there was something that I observed now I want to reveal this to you because there was something that happened when Elisha was first called that it goes overlooked I spoke about it briefly one time but I want to show you something at the latter part of Elisha's life, Elisha became sick. Saints, there was something that happened in 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 21. Something mighty took place because at that verse before, the text says that after Elijah called for Elisha, Elisha said, let me go and kiss my mother and father, tell them goodbye. In verse 21 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21. He went and cooked the meal for them and fed them. Then he left. There was something that took place between the mantle being passed to him and saying, come on. And then him saying, let me go back to my parents. The parents represented bloodline. 
I want to show you something. Elisha ended up sick at the end of his life. Remember, he died. But before he died, he was extremely sick. Elisha became sick because that came from his mother and father's bloodline. A kiss is an act of intimacy. And when he kissed them, it was him continuing his intimacy with that lineage. There are things that took place in Elisha's life that even Elisha did not understand why it was happening to him. He did not know why he was sick. Elisha did not know he was a prophet. He was a seer, but he did not understand his sickness. And his sickness was completely tied into that there was a breach in time. The prophet said, come. He said, no, let me go kiss my mother and father. He went and fed his mother and father. He went, go so into his mother and father. And in that moment, he chose to permit a portal of the covenant of old. Grandebe sunda la vaso. Rebe kere de via. I'm trying not. I'm trying to. <laughs> I can't. Ah. <sighs> so saints, when he became older. Now, mind you, that's not my point, but I, the spirit just talking to you. When he got old, he got sick. Where did the sickness come from? It didn't come from Elijah. Elijah didn't die from sickness. Where did the sickness come from? It did not come from his man of God because his man of God wasn't sick. The sickness came from the mother and father that he kissed when the man of God called him. Listen to me, people of the Lord. Make sure when God is calling you that you don't kiss other things because those covenants will haunt you in the future. Saints, if you remember, why did Judas kiss Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? Because the kiss was, Judas understood that kisses was how you greet In the Lord. That's why even in the New Testament it said, greet your brother with a holy kiss. A holy kiss. I mean, there's no perversion in it. You're not trying to sleep with them. You're not trying to have sex with them. You're not trying to have no type of uh, perversion with them. The kiss is rooted in love. Care. Intimacy and covenant. Brotherhood. We are tied together. No harm. So saints, when he kissed Jesus, I want you to see this. He kissed Jesus as if it was of the former teaching and literature. This is a covenant being born. This is a, a intimacy, okay? But it was really to show them who Jesus was, right? Now, here's the other point I want to point to you. So when Elisha went and kissed his mother and father, he was entering into a covenant with their bloodline, even though there was another bloodline being exposed to him. Elijah is now the one anointing him, but there's a breach in that anointing because he goes and kissed him right when that anointing is flowing. Saints, what did it really mean when God told Elijah, go anoint him in your place? You know what it meant? Go and teach him my ways. Go and teach him my word. Go teach him how I think, how I act, what I want, what I need. Show me your glory. Yes. Show me your glory. That's, that's what he means, teach him. I want to see, want to see 
your face I want to see want to see your face yeah 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 want to see want to see your face whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I want to see, want to see your face, yeah, 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 show me your glory, whoa, 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 whoa. show me your glory, yeah, yeah, whoa. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Show me your glory. So saints, are you seeing this? So there's a mystery to that breach right there. And see, that's what happened. See, when the prophet shows up, it is your time. Now saints, I want to magnify something about the power of Elisha. Now that was one thing that he did wrong, but that, that, that doesn't, that's not his testimony. There was so much power on Elisha, and I want to talk to you about it, because remember, God picked him out. God said, go anoint him in your place. So God knew that Elisha had what it took. There was something special, and remember, Elijah was powerful. Elijah was a god. Elijah was so supernatural that he would disappear. He would translate just like Ezekiel. He would disappear. So there was something mighty about Elisha. Elisha was actually carrying a God realm in him that he didn't know about. Saints, the Bible said in verse 21, 1 Kings chapter 19, that when Elisha, he arose, he went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Saints, this text is so powerful because we always hear about ministering to God or ministering to the people of God. But in this text, it says that Elisha ran and ministered unto his prophet. Now, saints, there was a lot of things involved in this because the word minister, it is a word to um, supply with care to take care of the needs of. Now, mind you, this is not homosexuality. This is not sexual. This is completely uh, honor. It's completely uh, sensitivity to vision. You hear what I said? Sensitivity to vision, meaning He's recognizing that Elijah has a major thing that he has to complete on earth. So therefore, I'm going to supply you what you need to complete it. These are two men. They're not homosexuals. They are knit by the Holy Spirit. And the father has said, go anoint him. So go teach him. So what, what is a powerful trait? that Elisha has, his teachability. Because remember what I told you, anoint him mean teach him. So why would God say anoint him? Out of all the men that exist, go anoint him. Because God is saying, I know he's going to swallow the word and not spit it out. I know that he's going to take in that word. He's going to receive that word. That word is going to live in him and produce out of him. So saints, watch this. God says, go anoint him in your place. Now, I want you to see this. 
Where was Elijah's place? That shows you that a prophet is not just a person, but a place. Remember in the earlier broadcast that I just did, I talked to you about the difference of liberty and freedom. Freedom is a position. Liberty is a location. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the prophet's place is where the spirit of the Lord is. And that's why you'll see in the word of God, it'll say that the hand of the Lord came on Jeremiah. The hand of the Lord came on Ezekiel. God's hand came on them. Remember what King Jesus said. They called him a devil, say you cast out demons with the, de uh, with the devil. And he says, I cast out by the finger of God. What was Jesus talking about? The Holy Ghost. Where is the finger? On the hand. Your hand is made up of fingers. So he said, the finger of God is how I cast him out, which was by the Holy Ghost. And now we see all throughout the word of God that the hand of God came upon the prophets. So what is this really meaning? The spirit of the Lord. The, the spirit of God is the hand of God. So when the Bible says, humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of the Lord, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. And see, the Holy Spirit is in all these offices. You have five fingers. The apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, and all that, the pastor. What you have to see is in all these office, offices, they are places. Now, saints, if you, if you got a job at a business place, you notice that your boss has an office. Your general manager has an office. They have office and that is a place where you go and you meet them. They call you in and discuss things with you. Now watch this people of God. So when we deal with offices, it is a place where you're called into intimacy with the prophet. The prophet calls you in. You're at the prophet's desk. So saints, what happens is now there is an assignment and there is a ministry that you have to the prophet while that prophet is in ministry to the earth, God's will, souls. What Elisha did in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21, is that the Bible says that he went after Elijah. That means that Elijah was his pursuit. Elijah was his whole prayer focus. So when he came to God in prayer, he was telling the Lord, Lord, help me. So that Elijah could get pleasure out of me. Lord, give me wisdom so I don't say something that Elijah is not in agreement with. He went after Elijah. The Bible didn't say he went after God. The Bible didn't say he went after the Lord. It didn't say that he went after his heavenly father. The word of God said that he went after Elijah. That means Elijah was what he was thinking about day and night. Uh, um, is Elijah in agreement with this? Well, if he's not, then I'm not. Is Elijah, does Elijah want this? Well, if he don't want this, I don't want it. Is Elijah getting blessed off of this? Well, if he's not getting blessed, then I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested. Elisha's whole schedule was predicated on, is this making Elijah experience God through me. Saints, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21, it's, it said three things. He arose, he went after, and he ministered. These are the three processes of good success and prosperity, the prophetic power of God. He arose, 
Arose means that he refuses to be held captive by demonic power. He arose. That's the same thing Jesus did after he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He arose, which is a sign of mental victory, emotional victory, financial commitment and honor towards God. It is a sign of being more than a conqueror. I think that's Romans 8, 37 and on or somewhere around there, Romans 8. He arose. Now, I want you to see this. A rose is also a rose. So he became a rose in Elijah's garden. So Elijah was able to experience the fragrance of a rose through Elisha. He was able to experience the beauty of a rose through Elisha. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he arose. He got up, but he became a rose. He arose. Now he is a rose. When Elijah smells his decisions, he smells a rose. When Elijah hears his words, he smells a rose. When Elijah looks at his company, Elijah sees a rose. When Elijah looks at his behavior, his conduct, he smells a rose. A rose is a beautiful, is, is, is a beautiful instrument in a garden. And saints, when he arose, he took on the nature of beauty. So now Elisha, everything that he did towards Elijah was beautiful. It made Elijah feel the presence of God. See, Elijah was already a God, but now Elisha is operating as the presence of God to God. All Jesus is, is God blessing God. The Holy Ghost came to bear witness. The Holy Ghost is God bearing witness of God. The Bible says he'll testify of Jesus. Joshua was a God ministering to God, Moses. So Moses felt a God experience when he encountered Joshua. Elijah now has someone giving him God. Because remember, he just heard a report from Jezebel say, I'm going to take your head off by this time tomorrow. So there's nervousness, there's tension, there's anxiety. And saints, Elijah had an anxiety attack. That's what happened. He had an anxiety attack. And now God sends him somebody that's going to carry God's presence to Elijah because he just experienced the presence of Satan so strongly. And God is now possessing Elisha to minister to Elijah, which is the same way how God created angels to minister to him. And God created that woman to minister to Adam. And God created the church to minister to King Jesus. Saints, he arose, he went after Elijah. Now, saints, when you go after somebody, I mean, you pursue them, but also you yield to them. You know why? Because you ever heard somebody say when you're about to walk through a door after you, which means you go first, then I'll go after. And that means you make your steps and I'll follow in your footsteps. That means you make a move and I'll imitate your movements. Is this not what Apostle Paul said to Timothy? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Apostle Paul was dealing with, go after me, follow my footsteps, imitate my behavior. He went after Elijah, which means he not only, he pursued him, but he also waited for him. He yielded to him. Saints, the another aspect was that he ministered unto him. 
Elisha was given a ministry to please his prophet. That was the only reason why God had him on earth. That was his purpose. His purpose was simply to create pleasure for his prophet. That's why he was created. His anointing was to create pleasure for his prophet. That was his purpose. You, that was his destiny. You know how people say, I'm, I'm gonna get to my destiny. That was Elisha's destiny. He was anointed to make Elijah happy. That's why he was on earth. He ministered. That means that he became an angelic encounter for Elijah. 